you know, it's obviously a lot better. We we feel we know what's going to happen, that we're going to be playing and fans will be there. So I think that's uh, that's just a different. We, and we know we're going to most likely play, which last year at this time we didn't, I don't think we really knew anything uh, as far as what's going to happen. And uh, it was uh, Really difficult year for the players, uh, the testing, the unknown, who's going to be there, who's not. Um, I think it all was uh, amazing that the players could get through the year the way they did and that we were able to uh, just get it, get through it all. Uh, I think it's, I don't think uh, the, enough credit has been given to the players for being able to go through what they had to go through last year. A really difficult year. You have a really veteran team, and I'm curious with the extra, a little bit of extra time in the summer this year, and with, with all the veteran guys you have, how far or do you think you're farther along than you normally would be at this point in the season? Yeah, I mean, the summers have helped. Uh, you know, last year we had a little summer and the year before, so and since the summer workouts have been uh, been available I think it's helped us progress quicker than we were before when you didn't have the summer um, so yeah I mean I think that's definitely true we we only have one freshman there haven't been many years uh, that we've only had one freshman uh, and having so many veteran guys I mean it's just a lot easier uh, the new guys have picked everything up really well. Uh, Cole has been having trouble with his ankle. He's not going to play tonight, but he should be at practice Tuesday. At, at, we, we think he'll be 100% by Tuesday. And he didn't miss anything prior to that, so he's, he's in, he understands what we're doing. Barama has been out a little bit. He's not going to play tonight. He's going to practice tomorrow and Tuesday, and uh, you know we'll see how his knee reacts to that. He's he's been out for about the last eight or ten days, but but prior to that he had good workouts. Um, so we're hoping that he'll be back at full speed by Tuesday, and uh, you know we'll see how how that is. Everybody else is. Healthy and uh, ready to go. Uh, Coach, Jimmy and Buddy obviously played together in high school on the same team at JD. What's changed about their dynamic since then? And also, I guess, what's been through? You know, they, uh, you know, they're both good players. Um, you know, Jimmy's picked up everything we're doing quickly. Um, in spite of the fact he went to Cornell. He's, he's been able to pick up the things we're doing here. And, uh, you know, he's the, the, the transition with uh, him and Cy and, and Cole and Benny, the four guys that weren't here last year, has been really good. They really fit in. You know, obviously we lost, you know, two forwards and a guard that really uh, contributed a lot last year, but we were able to pick up guys in the portal that fit in exactly into those positions. So I think uh, the overall effect was was good from what, who we lost and who we got. And uh, I think the biggest change is I think Jesse and Frank have improved uh, tremendously uh, they're light years ahead of where they were last year uh, I think John Bowles been good I think his practices have been good uh, but uh, just the experience of the guards playing together size really fit in he's a veteran guy he's you know third year in college he, he understands what we need him to do. He gives us a guy that pushes it really more effectively up the court than anybody we've had in a long time. His speed is really good at the guard spot. And uh, he's 
fit in extremely well. This whole group has. They've really done everything we've asked them to do. They're in as good a position as we could ask them to be in at this stage. It'll be good to get out there and play in the Dome tonight. The exhibition games will be important. Uh, but again, this group's it's a veteran group, guys that have played and understand what they need to do. And uh, other than the two little injuries, uh, everybody's been, been healthy. And, and Cole played the whole summer and the whole fall up until a couple weeks ago when he turned his ankle. So he should be fine by next week. You know, he's a more he's a veteran player. He's uh, physically ready. Buddy was, you know, as a freshman, wasn't physically ready. He, he was he contributed more than I thought he would as a freshman. He made an amazing number of big shots when you consider that he was just a freshman and he started slowly. But I remember back to the BC and Pittsburgh Miami games at home. We were struggling. He came in and made big shots that turned the game around. So uh, you know he had a very productive freshman year, and then he made a big jump, and then he made another jump last year. And I think he's made another pretty good size jump this year. So uh, again, but Jimmy's more mature. He's uh, physically stronger than he was at Cornell. He's 10 or 15 pounds bigger. Uh, he's an older guy now. He had the year of prep school and, he, and the extra year in college. So uh, he's fit in well. All, the, all the, the newcomers have. Benny's done a really good job of figuring out what he needs to do. He's still a freshman. I think we sometimes don't understand about freshmen. There's one Carmelo Anthony and then everybody else. Everybody else. And they need a year to kind of figure out what it's about, how what they have to do to get better. And we've had some All-Americans that fit into that category. But that freshman year, they're figuring things out, made a contribution. Uh, but then they, by the second year, they figured out. Benny, Benny's playing very well, but he'll he'll figure it out. And he'll be really good next year. But he's making good progress this year. It's helped him to have Cole and Jimmy, two guys that are veteran guys, to play against, play with. The veteran guards have helped him. Uh, so, I mean, that's all been good. Do you think the expectations are a little out of whack when a five-star comes in and people expect them to make, you know, impact kind of Well, again, you know, I, I can't, I can't, uh, I don't worry about what people's expectations are. They're, you know, that's... They have never seen him play, so they have no idea what he can do or can't do. And they're making projections based on, well, I'm not even sure what, <laughs> nothing really, because what you do in high school is, you know, is what you do in high school. It's got nothing to do with college, but uh, Benny's a good player and he'll, he'll help us. Uh, I think one of the biggest things, we have three guards, three forwards, they're all gonna play. They're all gonna play. And right now we have two healthy centers and, and John Bowl can play forward or center. And we get Barama healthy, you know, we'll have 10 guys. We always play eight, but I can see using an extra. If you have an extra center, it's a little easier to get that guy in there. But, uh, you know, we'll see how it, how it goes. But, uh, you know, I mean, uh, we have the same expectation every year. We're going to play the best we can, do the best we can, and at the end of the year, that'll be it. Your record is your record. And uh, all the preseason stuff is, you know, it's just all speculation. Coach, you touched on the transfers that you have. How have you uh, coached differently but gone about the transfer portal and everything with your basketball team? Well, you start out with the transfer portal, you see who you're going to lose, and you know we knew we were going to lose some guys, and uh, you know that that's just part of what college is. And uh, four days later, we had three guys. So you know it's just the way it works. 
generally schools like us, if we miss on a player or we need a player, we're going to get a player. We're going to get a good player. Simple as that. North Carolina lost guys this year. They got two really good players. You know, Texas got about six. Uh, Kansas got three or four. All the big schools are going to get good players in the transfer portal. I don't have any problem with the transfer portal. It's, it's really good for some guys. Other guys, they'll get into a worse situation, but that's always been the case with transfers. We've had guys that transferred from here that were doing pretty good and did nothing where they transferred to. That's just part of it. Now it's just easier. So people will leave even if they're, you know, they're playing and they, all of a sudden you see them leaving. And it could be anything. It could be they don't like somebody here, they want to get near home, they want to do something different. So they're just easier and you're going to have more transfers. It's simple. And, and it'll work out good for, for a lot of them and it'll work out badly for some of them. It's just the way transfers have always been. The difference is instead of four or five hundred, you're going to have seventeen or eighteen hundred transfer. So it's going to be more guys, and some some didn't even get scholarships. Some did, you know, really didn't get a good place. So it's it's a difficult difficult thing, but you know you adjust to it and you you move on. It's pretty simple. Well, Jesse's stronger. He worked with Ryan. He's, he's much stronger. Frank's stronger. Um, I think he's a little bit more aware of what he needs to do. He's still not there. He's still got a ways to go, but that would be expected from a guy that didn't play much, you know, coming out of high school. And it, it just takes time for guys like that. Uh, particularly big guys, but especially guys that haven't had a big background. Uh, but he's he's got a good touch. He's getting better. Uh, Frank has improved the most of any. He's just more aggressive. He's more using his physical attributes better this year and uh, still has a big upside, still has a, a ways to go. But uh, both guys have made good progress, and they're they're bigger, stronger, and a little bit more experienced uh, this year. Coach, uh, your, your good friend Mike Krzyzewski announced a long time ago this is going to be his last season. Uh, is that something you see yourself doing when it comes to that point? I don't know. I doubt it. I'm not sure, really. I don't know what's going to happen. I haven't thought about it. You know, I'm with a coach, and. I told every recruit that we recruited this year that I'd be coaching them next year. I don't have any plans to do anything differently. Um, we can't talk specifically, but it's the best recruiting class we've ever had. Period. May not have a superstar, doesn't have Carmelo, but top to bottom, uh, the players and the coaches did an unbelievable job. Um, the five players we have are way underrated. Mainly three of them didn't play last summer or in high school, so you know, it was, they didn't get evaluated. But when you look at balance in a recruiting class, uh, you know, it's hard to get one guy at every position, and, uh, and we did that. But uh, it's, it, I think it's an underrated class. I think these guys are better which is good. It's good to get guys like that. The common belief, I think, is that when Buddy and Jimmy are, are done here, that, that you're going to walk away. Has anybody ever, have I ever said that? Has anybody ever said that, Mark? Has anybody ever said that? A lot of people Who? Who? The internet. So that's what we're going to go by, what the internet says? What did I just say? Have you ever heard me say that? Has anybody here ever heard me say that? So if we're going to go by the internet, we're in trouble in this world. I hope you don't go by the internet. I just hope you don't look at the internet and actually think there's things out of there that you can actually use. I hope you don't do that. I think there are some people that do, and it's 
to me, the saddest thing I've ever seen in my life. You don't know who it is, you don't know what they do, you don't know what they know, and they're coming out with whatever it is. That's incredible. But I've never said that. I've never really thought about it. If you were the, the absolute truth, I coach this team and recruit the same as I have for 20 years. And 15 years ago, people asked me the question right in here, are you going to retire? 15 years ago. <laughs> I mean, what do I have to do? Stay here for 20 more years before you stop asking that question? I don't know. But I feel great. If I was 60 years old, would anybody even think are you, are you retiring? So the only reason you would ask that question is because I'm 76. No. No? No. Really? Because it's just been talked about. But, but really, think, don't say no so fast. The only reason anybody's talking about me retiring, the only reason, is because I'm old. Older. But you don't seem old. I don't feel old. That's why I'm still coaching. If I, if I felt old, I wouldn't. But my point is this. I think in, look, I've said this before, I'll say it again. I stand out here, I watch these guys do what they do, I correct what I see. My assistants do a lot of that, they understand, they're good, they're really good coaches. We do it together. And I can do that whether I was 50, 70, 80, whatever. Warren Buffett still goes to work. Is he 90? Because you know what? We're not running out here. I'm not coming out here and running up and down. I don't have to work out. I don't have to make baskets. I don't have to run. I don't have to guard anybody. I tell people what they have to do. And there's just a myth about your retiring thing. And uh, I mean, if you're done at 60 and you don't want to coach anymore, you retire. There's guys have done that. Most of the people that do that at 60 have told me they wish they didn't do it but that's not why I'm coaching. But you just, you know, you keep coaching, you like it, and you want to do it. You want the same, same feeling you always had about coaching. I feel the same today I did when I started. 20th year, whatever. Uh, you know, if you, can, if you can do the job and you like doing the job, why not do the job? I don't, I don't have an answer for that. If at some point in time, which could happen anytime. You don't feel you're doing the job or don't whatever. Then you decide then you retire that when that happens. But it's not something I'm thinking about or worrying about or have any thoughts about at all. None. Zero. Going back to the transfer portal. Can you talk about how difficult it is to actually build a team and build continuity in a program knowing that several guys are gonna leave and several new guys are gonna You know, I don't think it is. I think that you, especially with the summertime, the time in the summer with guys, eight, the eight weeks, I mean, whatever. I mean, some years, there's years in the past where you've had five freshmen or six freshmen, four or five, six, and two or three guys coming back. I mean, that's, you got to you get that team ready. I mean, you know, it's Duke and Kentucky, they get a higher level player, but they're basically getting all new players every year. Now they get a higher level players, player because of their recruiting power and what they've done in recruiting. But basically, you put a team together. When we get the Olympic team together, we have good players, but we have 10 days to get them ready. So here we have eight weeks, then we have four weeks in September, and now we have a few more weeks with exhibition games and getting into the non-conference to get our team ready so it's really enough time and if they were all freshmen it'd be a little harder but the talent level at Kentucky and North Carolina or, or Duke those two mainly have made it possible for them to be very successful they can have a glitch possibly like last year but part of that was they didn't have as many highly rated freshmen as they had before in both cases and then they didn't have the summer last year and fall to get practices in. But, so anyway, I mean, it, you can put a team together and and we have plenty of time to do that. Plenty of time. Got time for two more. Talk, can you kind of talk about how the process bring in guys like Jordan 
guys like Benny, guys like Cole, Samir, et cetera, to get them to come to this team and buy into this program? They've been great. They have, they've, they're, they're what we needed. It was a perfect fit. They saw that in recruiting. Uh, sometimes, you know, players, when they look at opportunities, and they do that whether they're freshmen or not, but Jimmy and Cole saw the opportunity at forward here. Samir saw the opportunity in the backcourt. And, uh, you know, Benny knew we were going to lose guys, and he thought we would have Quincy back or Robert or both. So that opened up more. I remember calling when that when that happened, and said, "Well, you just moved up. You know, your playing time just moved up." And so, you know, they they looked at that. They figured that out. You know, but obviously, Buddy has a great head on his shoulders. But how have you seen him be able to handle this fame and well deserved with what he's been able? To you know, he just comes to play. He comes in to play, and that's what he does. Uh, he's always done that, and uh, he just wants to play and, you know, go out there and compete. And uh, he doesn't think about the other stuff. That's just, you know, that's just part of it. You have to accept that when you get to a certain level. Um, I'd say he's improved. I think, I'd say, if, if anything, Joe's probably improved the most in the backport or perimeter guys. He's He's played... Uh, really outstanding in practice. He's had, uh, you know, people forget he was not a point guard in high school. He's played the position for two years. He's been better than everybody out there on the internet thinks. The internet haters that want to hate on Joe or for some reason, they like they hate it on Buddy, and they'll probably hate on him again if he has a bad game. That's just the way it is. And, uh, there's nothing you can do about it. But Joe has been really consistent in practice the two years. First of all, he was really good. He was really good in the tournament. He won the San Diego State game. He helped the West Virginia game. When Buddy wasn't hitting, he, he was big. So he's had really good success in big games. And uh, he's, I think he's much better this year. I think he's playing much better, which you would hope for you know, getting his third year in at the point. He's comfortable there. And uh, he's been really good. He's been really good there. So, you know, I'm not done unless you're done. You any more questions? This is your opportunity. Cole's a great shooter. He's a better defender because at Villanova they switched on everything. He had to guard guards. He, he wasn't able to do that. But not many big forwards can do that anyway. But he's an outstanding shooter. He can put them all on the floor better than people think. He didn't do that much at Villanova, but he can. Uh, he's 6'9", 230 pounds. He's probably the best forward shooter that we've had that I can think of. I mean, I have to. I don't know where I'd even go. You know, Preston Shumpert maybe, but he shoots at a high level, a very high level. Well, I think with Cole and Jimmy, you look at those guys side, they fit in, they understand the game, they're good, they understand how to play. Um, they're good players, you know, so um, that's the bottom line. You know, Jimmy's become a really good player. He wasn't recruited much in high school, kind of found a place at Cornell and uh, really played well, got better every year there. and. Uh, he can play anywhere. He's a good player. Thanks, Coach. I think the one thing about – no, I'll finish. One thing about – I don't do these, so, you know, we'll do what, whatever they want. And I like doing them. I'm contrary public opinion, but uh, it's all right. Don, I don't like you, but I like everybody else. I'm coming to accept that. I'm okay. <laughs> you know that's not true. Anyway, the uh, – what was I talking about? Before you interrupted me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all these guys have fit in. I mean, it's a great group. I don't know what we're going to do on the court. I don't know how many wins. I don't get to that. I don't get into that business. But they'll they'll play. They'll give you everything they've got. They'll be fun to watch. 
and uh, these guys have really come together. Uh, my assistant coaches and these guys did an unbelievable job in recruiting. You know, it's everybody talks about the guy you lost and this and that. You know, there's some guys we lost that we didn't recruit this year. <laughs> you know, it's just I guess it's just you know, just because we talked to a guy last June that we're still recruiting. We we aren't even recruiting three or four guys that we talked to in June, and the we have four guards for next year. That's optimal. Anything more than that is not easy. So we got just what we needed to get, and I, I could not be happier with the guys that we've got. But you're always going to miss on somebody, and sometimes you miss on a guy like we did one year, and we got Akeem Warwick. And he was pretty good. He was pretty good. He was an All-American. So I think we've got some guys like that and they're coming in, they're really good. And, you know, time will tell. But uh, we got exactly what we went after and what we needed to get, and that very rarely happens in recruiting. Very, very rarely happens. So we're really happy with that group and with this group too. It'll be a fun, fun team to watch play this year. Thank you.